you do need something beyond you cannot make acting your religion you cannot make it because of the instability because the constant jobs that may or may not come but the one thing is trust Welcome to Common Sense Mamita. I'm Lydia Nicole. If it is your first time and you're looking for acting tips, showbiz insight, or life lessons, you have come to the right place. So make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can get everything in real time. Today, I am just delighted to bring to Common Sense Mamita a wonderful, amazing actress, woman, mother, wife, and sister. So please help me welcome Norma Maldonado. Yay! Thank welcome, you. Norma. Thank you. I'm it's so such excited a... to have you at the table. I am honored to be here. So First thank of all, you. where can we find you? I have a Virginio commercial running that I'm so excited about and a pilot, Hombre, by, in Showtime. And hopefully we're waiting to see what happens with that. I was on Jane the Virgin, but they wrapped their fifth season. So well, congratulations. congratulations. That was excellent. So who did you study? with my first like real teacher teacher was Joanne Barron uh, with uh, Meisner technique what was something you got from that class that because I know her classes her stuff is two years it's a conservatory mm -hmm. right so what tool or tools did you get from that that you take with you to either audition or to on set when you're working as an actor discipline dedication living in the moment working off of what you have in front of you and a thick skin because mm. she was very challenging. Unfortunately, a few people from class kind of left acting after that. And I think I told her this recently. I saw her recently. It's like the movie An Officer and a Gentleman. Mm -hmm. When Mayo is, you know, he's in the rain right, and right. he's all, Ugh! And he goes, you can't do 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 Mayo. Why don't you leave? He goes, I have nowhere to go. Well, that's how I feel about acting. I have mm -hmm. nowhere to go. There's nothing I want to do. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, I was on a walk with friends, and there was this cute little boutique, and my friend goes, oh, you should get a job there. Your acting doesn't pan out. And I'm like, no, honey, I'm going to act till the day I die. It's not even a question. Yeah. It, you know, it's an art it's we don't like form. her, and she can't be our friend anymore. No, no, she apologized. <laughs> no, it's and you know, and, and that's like her. that's a common thing that no, at know. least myself have has learned to deal with. Yeah, we, that's where I need the thick skin. Is that sometimes people who are not in the industry understand the they want to help day. out, and they 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 think, they, they think that out. acting is just a little hobby. For some people, it is. Mm -hmm. And I said this to a mom who had a 12-year-old daughter who said, oh, I want to be an actress. I said, can I give you some advice? And the mother's eyes were like, and I said, it is the most comprehensive career you can ever have. You need to know everything about everything, or like a little bit. You, you want to be a princess? You got to know geography. Where is she a princess of? Mm -hmm. The difference between being a princess of the Caribbean islands or being a, of the Netherlands. What's the Netherlands? History. You have to know science. You, right. And I think that's what makes actors so compassionate. Because when you step out of your zone and you're living the life of a character and you're seeing the world through their eyes, then you have compassion for how other people feel. And I know in this political climate, not to get political, but a lot of people go, well, who are these actors to say and feel and who are they? Well, the truth is that we are storytellers and we are telling stories of lives. And when you're doing that, it opens and expands you as opposed to other careers that you are limited to just that. Not that you're, you know, but we are expansive. I didn't go to medical school, but I can play one, you know, right. a doctor on TV. Right. So, you know what right. I mean? And, it, and if you trained properly, as an actor, then you do have a lot of knowledge because as you're talking, I'm thinking Stella Adler, I exactly. studied with Stella, and Stella, her whole thing was, you cannot step into the character until you know the life of the character. So if you're playing a nurse, you have to go to the ER, you have to know what kind of nurse you're playing, you gotta sit there. When I was with her, I literally had a role that I was doing and I had to go to the ER at Cedar sinai and shadow a nurse for two days. Wow. to get a sense of what that was. And the rhythms and yes. the thoughts. Yes, if when I first came in the business, most of the actors that I saw were so well informed about everything. And I remember thinking, I wanna know 
that. I want to I want to be like that. But unfortunately, you have a lot of people getting into the business now that think it's just about being on camera. They don't realize all the work that goes into it. Just like being a comic, people don't realize the craft of it. Oh, and yeah. so it, it is true what you say, but there are some knucklehead actors out there that give us a bad name. That's all I got to say. Well, these that. are people that are going for it for the fame. Yeah. The fame, which is, there's nothing wrong with yeah. fame. No, there's not, but, but, but you have to know. But the, the, and, and the thing is that, you know, yeah, when you're on set with someone who's a seasoned actor and yes. they're talking about everything but their career, yes. you're like, you sit there and you're like, ah. Oh, it's delicious. I studied with Ivana Chubbick. And what did you learn from Ivana? More thick skin. <laughs> yes. It's weird because people come, acting teachers come to me through serendipitous uh, ways. I was taking an acting class with someone on the method. I had never done method. And she told me to read this book. So I went to Barnes and Noble and Ivana Chubbick's book fell. And I put it back and then it fell again. And I said, <laughs> maybe I should buy this book and read it. And I sussed her out, started going to her studio. And in two months I was in her master class and it was great. I think she's a very giving teacher because she brings in directors and writers mm -hmm. and producers mm -hmm. and she matches her students with them. So mm -hmm. she helps. Mm -hmm. And a lot of expansion happened for me. But then I went to the groundlings. I needed just a little levity. Right, right. And then I realized improv is not how I thought it was. You can't plan it. It has to be like that. So that was a good discipline. Then I went to Diana Castle, who she, it's all imagination. Mm -hmm. So you take a monologue and you have to go line per line and flush it out in the as if world. And I love that. And then I went to Warner Laughlin and I fell in love. What Warner helped me was to not judge myself, to accept myself, and to allow the chips to fall where they may, and move forward and be grateful. Because in her classes, we're not allowed to bring negativity or bad criticism. So what happens is you start working freer because you know you're not gonna get, you know, you call that acting. <laughs> You know, it's like, well, how do you feel about your work? And you're like, well, I felt it could have been a little stronger. Okay, then let's do it again a little stronger. It's very supportive. Mm -hmm. She was another one that came to me through just divine intervention. And then Deborah Aquila. Oh, my God. I love her. Is she also big on the text? She's big on exactly what you're saying about Stella, because she's Stella trained. Mm -hmm. And she also, and I don't want to cry, brings the art to me as an actress mm -hmm. because what I learned quickly working in television is that in a way it is kind of like paint by numbers right you know you're in the third act so this is your part in the third act which also young actors watch TV and break it down when you're watching it you know you know that in the first five seconds if somebody dies the first person that seems to be the killer is not the killer it's a red herring mm -hmm. usually so there's a method to the writing. Honor the writing. Don't improvise and make up lines when you walk in. Honor the writing. And if you follow the map that the writer has left, because it's a tried and true method. Right. Hello. Right. Then. They're working from formula. Exactly. Yes. The formula. Follow the. That's why I say paint by numbers. Mm -hmm. If you follow the formula, mm -hmm. chances are you're going to do well in the room. Mm -hmm. But then if you layer that with a comprehensive understanding of the character, where they come from, their social economic background. I mean, I think Deborah Quilla even wants us to know what color sheets we had when we were five in the mm -hmm. room. You know, that kind of just to that. And it's important. It's it important is. because it changes everything about you. You know, as a person, when you do all that homework, it physically changes your face almost. Well, you also come in empowered. Mm -hmm. I went to an audition recently. One of the lines was blow, fly, maggot gestation say that three times mm. <laughs> and so I bumped into a lovely actress and, and I said oh did you go she was just leaving I said how'd you like that line blow fly maggot gestation and she goes just say maggot gestation and I said no no I said blow fly because a blow fly is the type of fly that flies on a cadaver and when they have their larva scientists can tell how long the person has been dead so blow fly is not you know, an arbitrary term, there is a reason. And that's why doing that research is so vital. Plus, when you know what you're saying, right. you say it with authority. Right, and also you don't touch the line. She was, I think she was trying to do it because she probably thought I was nervous and that I, because I kid a lot, like, ooh, but I, you've done your work. Yes. So as someone who has been in the business for a long time, how did you manage 
those lows when there was no acting coming? How did you take care of yourself financially? What did you do to get through the hump? One of the most important things that I feel that I've done is honor when I wanted something very bad and I didn't get it. You know, a lot of people say, just get over it, let it go. It's not that easy. It was just an investment of your life. It's mm-hmm. an investment of your time. It's an investment of your dreams. And when it doesn't materialize, it hurts. So I give myself a day or two to cry, to scream, to yell, and just let it out. But then I go to gratitude mode. Well, at least I got in. At least I have an agent. At least I have a manager. And I've always told my children, gratitude is latitude because it does bring you up. I do have a spiritual life that I invest in. And I love to dabble in different theologies, different religions. So I like to do that or I like to go places. I do my own hair. I do my own nails. So I save money that way, you know. I'm very fortunate to be married to someone who's very supportive and gives me my freedom. But you do need something beyond. You cannot make acting your religion. You cannot make it because of the instability, because the constant jobs that may or may not come. But the one thing is trust. Again, I'm going back to that word. Mm -hmm. Trust, because it's like an ocean. It'll go out and it'll come back in. It'll go out and it'll come back in. Hopefully it'll take you out there with it. But, you know, things don't last forever. So you sometimes have to have outlets that fill your heart. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, a doctor isn't a doctor 24-7. Right. He has, you know, his golf. He's got his this. He's got his that. Or she has her this and that. What is that? What does that look like? How do I feel my, feed my soul? It could be in books. It could be in art. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, but to also, that's where that healthiness, it's, it's not easy, it doesn't happen overnight, but you figure out what works for you. How do you ride the waves financially when you are going for an acting career? Because in the beginning, you had other jobs. Mm-hmm. How did you, like, either transition and go, okay, I'm going to put money away so that on those rainy days when there's no work coming in, or I'm good at this, I will take this job on from May to July because there's usually a very slow period in in the acting business and I know mm, I need something to hold me over. I am a person that has no pride. In the sense, I do have pride, but (laughs) in the sense that if I need to take... You don't have ego. uh, I do have, you do need ego. You do need ego because you've got to present, you've got to come with confidence, you got, you know, that's another thing, you've got to have confidence, but it can't be a false confidence. People see right through that. You don't have to be cocky, but you have to. I mean, now I walk into casting offices and I'm like, hey, what's up? You know, and I mean it because it's me. I bring Norma in. Right. They either like it or they don't. But it's, I'm not trying to impress them, but I'm just connecting because I connect as as people. I love Mm -hmm. people, so I connect with people and I love children. Children are great to play with too as an actor. I'm going to be honest, I'm not very good with finances. I always sort of know how much I have, so I don't spend more than what I have. Okay. And I also know priorities. So do I need to go to that concert or should I save that money for headshots? And I've been very blessed to always have representation. I'm always looking to, you know, you check in with them. You don't bother them, but you do check in. Another little secret of mine, when I couldn't afford classes, my older boy went to USC, right on. I was always at USC auditioning for their student films, which are marvelous. So if you don't have money for class, do student films. You learn on set, you're on set, you know what you're doing, you learn, you know, by hook or crook, whatever, but you're acting. Mm-hmm. If you don't have money or you don't get hired for that, then grab a few people and do play readings at home. Read, talk to people, create stuff, have fun, play in someone's living room just for the sake of it. Because that energy, this, this is where I get a little woo, but that energy carries through. Because it's you're working on a higher vibration and people pick that up. I've noticed people who have been struggling, they make it, and their whole, like what you were saying, their physicality, everything changes. Oh, absolutely. I remember Lupe Ontiveros, early on I worked with her on something. She was funny, she was hilarious, amazing. Then she started working and And doing. And she changed. She changed, and she was still Lupe, and she was still this and that. But she had her her, her self esteem, her aura, just her like, energy. Yes, yeah, yes it, it absolutely. Transformed. And it wasn't that she was better. No, it's no. That but she was happy. She centered herself. Yeah, there was she, a centering of 
this is who I am. It wasn't that desperate. I'm an actor. Will you hire me? Yeah. And I think that's important for all actors, whether you've broken through yet or not, is to find that place where you are centered. And if it means you have to take a job so that financially you, you're okay, so you're not going into that room smelling of desperation, because when you bring that in the room, it repels people. It does. And it also makes people angry that they feel guilty that they're not giving you the job, you know? And so you can't put that on people. You have yeah. to take care of yourself financially, which is part of honoring yourself to make sure that you have a little side hustle or a little money here, or a little money there. And the Actors Fund is a great place to take workshops about how to take care of your budget. They're fantastic. I better go do that. Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> the Actors Fund is fantastic for all kinds of stuff, but especially helping you figure out your money. Let's say you get a pilot or you get a TV show that only lasts for a season, you're able to store some of that money away not go shopping? It, it, not right away. You know, that's that's the... <laughs> I'm kidding. That's I'm kidding. the thing we learned. But, you know, when you talk about side hustles, I did murder mysteries. I got to travel around to oh, that's San awesome. Diego and Santa Barbara. And I did storytelling with We Tell Stories for 13 years. Wow. So I was getting paid a decent amount. As an actor. But I was tra I know all my ways around L.A. So if I have to be somewhere and I'm running late, I know shortcuts through that. And then I got to work with children, but I was on stage all the time. So you don't have to necessarily be a waitress or a waiter or a this or that. You can actually get jobs within acting. And some people, honestly, you could do stand-in work. Yes. You could do extra work. I personally wouldn't do it, but that's because I'm at a different level. But if you're in an entry level, and please, if you do extra work and you're on set, don't try to win over anybody. Be a fly on the wall. And be professional. Yeah. Be professional. Just learn. Yeah. Soak it in. Be a sponge. SpongeBob SquarePants. Just yes. sit there and soak it in and watch. I used to do that when I had smaller, you know, roles, little co-stars. I would sit and watch the actors and go, wow, you learn from them. Never trying to take focus to mm -hmm. yourself. Don't mm -hmm. do that. Don't be discovered. No, no. Do your job. You got paid to be, and a lot of times, believe it or not, you got paid to be an extra. I watch sometimes on TV and in movies, I watch the extras. And I go, wow, they're really good. They're committed. Be right. committed. Be right. committed. Right. It's a commitment. If you're prepared when you walk in the room and you're not asking of them, but you're of service, which I love that you said that. If you're of service and you're not thinking about wowing them and you're not thinking about, I, of course we want the job. Let's not kid ourselves. Right. But how do we get there? By preparing, by being the best we can and giving it. And if it's not the best for them, that's okay. It's the best for and us. And not making excuses for why you're not prepared. That is not the casting director's business. It's not their They yeah. don't care. Just do it. You didn't have time. You, you got the script five minutes before. You can always ask to wait till the last person finishes and then you go in to give you that extra time because that is your job. But don't give the casting director excuses of why you're late, why your dog ate your homework, None of that. I mean, you it's, don't know if that casting director just got their ass reamed by the producer because they sent some actor that didn't work out. I mean, I have been in sessions where they're screaming at the casting director because the guy that they hired was really bad and unprepared and they needed a replacement. I mean, they're people too. They have their issues. Mm -hmm. And no, you can't go in there with your problems. They don't care. Right. Everybody's got them. Right. Just do right. your job and, right. you know. Bring the sunshine. This has been so much fun fun Aww. i'm so happy now if this is your first time here and you're some of my friends which you better be subscribe please this is really important this is very helpful and this is another thing that's free so don't be silly subscribe and hit the bell so you can get everything in real time we are so grateful that you joined us today and if you have any comments please let us know what you thought of this interview below and until next time have a wonderful day and book that job Yes, get that <laughs> job! <laughs>